because I thought it was a code Intel, but ended up like everyone has slides. So <laughs> I Oops. don't have slides, but I have something to show, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, what I'm going to showcase today is actually something which I, I wrote for a CI/CD pipeline where I work. So I'm from GovTech, my name is Joseph, and I'm a DevOps as well as a software engineer. So yeah, that's my stuff. Okay, so when I first joined as a professional developer, I think one of the things that I found really confusing was versioning. So um, how many of you are not yet professional, like still studying, or like quick show of hands to get a feel? Still studying. Okay, what do you all think about versioning? Any ideas? Like besides those like three numbers you see on your app, then your app gets updated, and new features come in, and you go woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, yeah. So versioning was a bit of a confusion to me, and after a while, I came to realize like why version using those weird numbers. So. Okay, just now there was a raise of hands already. I think most of you know about Git. So Git is really a versioning tool. So why do we need more versioning? Okay, so um, okay, I'm going to have to wing this because I don't have any slides. Okay, so basically versioning. If you try... Okay, I need something attached to me. I need to type. Okay, I'll try my best on this. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. I think can. Uh, can I can? It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so why versioning? So I assume that you know what is Git ready. So let's go ahead and make a Git directory. So let's say temp, and then we cd temp in. Okay, the famous, yeah, we've initialized an empty git repository. And then we can make some changes, and then we can have an initial commit. Okay, uh, that's my ab abbreviation. It's like some kind of alias for git commit allow empty. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay, so you can see here that Git actually versions things for you already. You can see over here that there's a commit hash, and that commit hash actually allows people to know like, okay, this is this version of the code, and when you make another commit, it becomes into another version. Yeah, so, but the thing about this is that we don't know what these changes mean. So, this is one way of doing a versioning, and another would be, for us, what we do is Docker hashes. So, um, quick show of hands, how many have worked with Docker? Okay, not that many. Okay, so Docker is this containerization tool where it's like a virtualization layer where you can take away the operating system and like just run your software without caring whether things will work out. So okay, uh, why not I just give you an example? Okay, so let's create the Docker file. Okay, so um, I don't know. Okay, um, we do Node, so I'm gonna use Node. Okay, so Node eight um, Alpine. Okay, so once we have this Docker file, this Docker file is like a template for you to create your own sort of VM kind of thing. But it's not exactly a true VM because it still shares the kernel with the operating system. Okay, so let's build the image and you'll see that there's also a hash here. So that's one other way that we do versioning on the code level. So yeah, these hashes represent what the code is like at a certain point in time. But the thing with these hashes is that it's firstly it's confusing. So let's say if there's a bug fix, how if there's a bug in your code, how do you know that the user reporting is actually referring to a different version of your code? And yeah, so basically it's about human communication. Versioning is about human communication. How do you know which version people are talking about? Like I can say version 1.0.3 instead of saying like 8C1D329, you'd be like, what the heck? How do I find it? Okay, so um Okay, so that's for the product level. So another reason why we do versioning is actually to make sure things don't break. And I actually got an example for this. Okay, so let me get back to my code and okay, this is the product and yeah, it's over here. Okay, so we use Node over at GovTech and how many of you are familiar with Node? 
like Node.js. Okay, I guess it's one of the more popular ones, so most should know that. Okay, so you also know that um, Node has this very infamous thing called NPM, where you just run NPM install one time and like, like your disk is full. <laughs> okay, so I've created this temporary Git versioning dependency that I've actually published, but yeah, don't look at it. It's basically this, if you're curious. Okay, so the point of this is that I'm going to show you how this thing called Semver works. So Semver is what you see as your 1.0.3. So for example, in 1.0.3, 3 will be your patch version, which represents bug changes, bug fixes, things that don't break the code. The middle number, if assuming it's 1.0.3, 0 will be the minor version. So there are new features, but still backward compatible. And for the first, the leftmost, it's the major version. And when things change in the number, you don't really want to change the next number without rewriting your code. Okay, so if you take a look in package.json, for those who don't know, package.json, basically it's a dependency management. It specifies your dependencies. So over here, you can see that I am requiring the dependency that I wrote earlier. And I'm specifying it as tilde 5.0.0. So there are three other packages. This one indicates a star. And the last one indicates a caret 5.0.0. So I've written a test script here. So uh, I'm not cheating or anything. Yeah, it's going into each of the directories and running an npm install. So let's try that. Okay, so um, now I'm updating my dependence, and you'll see that npm is actually resolving. Okay, wait, hold on, something's not right. Because it's not showing up. Okay, so, um, okay, I'm actually cheating a bit, because I think most people are on node 8, which comes with a package lock. So I'm going to do this demonstration with node 6, which comes with npm 3 and does not have a package lock. Okay, so we'll run it again using npm 3, and you'll see the dependency resolutions. So, okay, you can see over here that Yeah, so you can see over here that one of them resolved to 5.01, and there's another over here that resolved to 6, and another that resolved to 5.1.0. So that's the difference between caret, tilde, and star. So basically, in caret, you don't mind the minor version. So if there are new features, you just bring it in. In caret, you just take in the bug fixes, and in star, you just get the latest version. So the dangerous thing about this is if you don't version your code properly, so let's say, if you make a breaking change and you don't actually, and you put it as a patch version. So, um, I've written the exact same test for all of these. Okay, I am not going to bother showing you, just trust that they are the same test. So, I'm going to run all of the tests right now, the exact same, the on these dependents. So the context is, in one of them, in 5.1.0, it's a minor change. It's not supposed to have any breaking changes, but I did introduce a breaking change. So now we'll run it. So from 5.0.1, which was the resolved version from NPM. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yes, it's NPM. Sorry, this is getting a bit awkward. Yeah, blame NPM. <laughs> yes, use Yan. It has an offline cache. Uh, okay, I don't think this is working out.
Okay, one last try. If not, I'm just gonna skip this section. Oh, sh <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Okay, so in any ways, the, what was supposed to happen was that the minor version would actually have broken, even though the specs should not have changed. So these tests are actually, were actually specs and like we write tests in order to verify the behavior that things are working correctly. And in this case, the tests will actually fail because one of our dependencies had code which is breaking. Yep, so that's the dangers of not knowing versioning because you might introduce a breaking change in your minor version. Okay, so um, how many ways of there are there of doing tagging? So I guess the first way is pretty, it's more intuitive, which is to actually increase your version over here. But so when we started out with a project at GovTech, one project that we did, we tried to use the version in NPM. But this actually got pretty messy quite quickly because when we pushed to an automated pipeline and the pipeline does the versioning for us, we got a lot of merge conflicts that we had to resolve by ourselves. So yeah, don't version using the file. Unless you're, if, I mean, I guess if you're a one-man team, it's fine. Yeah. So another way is actually through git tags. So what, does, what do git tags look like? Okay, so this is a fresh repository. There's nothing. So I'll go ahead and add one over here. Okay, so git tags looks like this. And Git tags, the good thing about git tags is that it tags this number. So for example, the 0, 0. 0.0.0 0 over there is actually associated with the commit. So these give a way for you to reference the commit. So remember what I said just now about the sample versioning, where the patch version indicates a bug change, minor version non-breaking changes. So when you tag these to a commit, it actually lets you understand what the commit does. So for example, if you see the major version suddenly hop from the previous commit, you, you know something's going to break. Yep, so that's what resulted in me creating this package, version tagging scripts. So I'll show you an example of like how to use it. Um, okay, the easier way would actually be to just use Docker. So it's on Docker Hub, and you can run it by having this command. Okay, I'm gonna put down the mic for a while. Okay, so uh, what this is going to do is basically I'm using Docker to run this image over here and I'm mapping the volume of my present working directory into the containers slash app and I'm running the command iterate at the end. So there are a few commands that I created. So first is init, which is to initialize the repo for versioning, which actually adds the 0, 0.0.0. .0. But since it's there already, we are going to use iterate, which you will see will change it to 0 0.0.1. Yep, yeah, so if we do the listing right now, you can see that it's 0 0.0.1. And if you need the minor version, you can do this. Just add a minor behind, and likewise, if you need a major, yep, yeah, you get a major. Okay, so I guess what else would I like to tell you about the code is Okay, perhaps some difficulties that I encountered while writing this code. So, okay, firstly, it's, I needed it to be completely language agnostic, so I had to learn shell script. So this is also one of the things that I didn't quite understand as a junior developer when I first joined. Like, why do I have to learn shell scripts? I'm perfectly fine with JavaScript. Like, leave me alone. That stuff is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, so it's actually really, really important for you to pick up a bit of shell scripting because in some cases you will never know what kind of system you're working with and shell is probably one of the more one of the things that you can expect to almost always be there unless you're using windows of course so <laughs> oh, i heard even windows has shell support in its latest version okay so um, one of the problems that i faced was that git does not tech, does not understand numbers so let's say um, let's say i am going to tag one point 1.0. Let's see. Okay, it still works. Next, I'm going to tag 1.9.0. So let's assume that 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 9 has passed. Okay, still in order. And now this was the surprising thing to me. So can you see that 9 comes after 10? 
Yes, so this was one of the points that I really had a lot of trouble with. I mean, okay, it's easy to do in JavaScript, but if you try to do it with shell script, you'll find that it's not as simple as it looks. Yeah, this was one of the major points that I found difficult. And another was like, well, Unix works diff in different ways from Mac. So I, when I wrote it on my Mac, it was totally worked. And then when I put it on a Linux, it completely broke. Yeah, so shell script, it's pretty important. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's all I have to share for today. If you want, you can check out the repo at the address over there. I'm not sure whether you can see it, but it's my user handle and version dash tagging dash scripts. So the instructions are there and I'm all full set of readme's. Lah. Yep, so I guess that's it. Yeah, thank you for listening. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, you can... Yeah, so um, yeah, that's my name. If you're looking for something, if you've got looking for a gig with us, you can email me there. If not, you can find my, re my geeky writings and my many unfinished products in github.com. Thank you. <laughs>